Ladies and gentlemen, in just a moment, you are going to hear the voice of a man who will tell you some tremendously important facts. Welcome to the Reality Revolution. I have a very, very special episode today. I have the amazing Dr. Irvin Laszlo. It has been my dream for a long time to just get a chance to speak even momentarily with Dr. Laszlo. If anybody has followed the channel all the way back to the first episode, The Reality Revolution, the name of this podcast comes directly from Dr. Laszlo's amazing book, Quantum Shift in the Global Brain. And after reading this book, I was so inspired as he described the world and the coming events and the world that we're in, that I wanted to create a podcast to sort of narrate what was happening in the world around us. Dr. Laszlo is one of the most amazing people in the world. He is twice nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize, is editor of the International Periodical, or has been the editor of the periodical World Futures, the Journal of General Evolution, and Chancellor Designate of the newly formed Global Shift University. He uh, was the founder and president of the international think tanks, the Club of Budapest, and the General Evolution Research Group, and the author of 83 books translated into 21 languages. He lives in Italy, and Dr. Laszlo has done an amazing job of expanding our understanding of quantum consciousness, and he has given some credibility to the idea of the Akashic field. These particular parameters, especially in academic discussion, in the past, before Dr. Laszlo, we, somebody would hear the Akashic field and they would laugh at it, but Dr. Laszlo has brought some credibility to these topics, and I was so excited and honored to have the opportunity to finally meet and talk with Dr. Laszlo. Welcome to the Reality Revolution, Dr. Laszlo. Thank you, Scott. It's my pleasure to be here. Wonderful to have your enthusiastic introduction. It's wonderful to speak with you. Let's explore reality in the, in the revolutionary sense. Let's explore. I noticed when I was reading through uh, your, your biography that you're a classical pianist. And so um, I, I just thought this, what a wonderful thing. A scientist, an amazing writer, got your start in classical pianism. So uh, I just, uh, 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 did uh, your experience in music uh, it, uh, take you to this place or, or did, did it have any relationship it, to your to It did, I'm still the same person, even though I shifted, uh, uh, shifted the persona as it were, or public image, at least twice having three different images. First one was in my use as a concert pianist. Uh, second one was as academic, teaching at, at, at Yale and Princeton and the State University of New York and Houston and other places. And then the third one now actually is more of an of a activist trying to bring about some of the change that I think is necessary in the world to become a more flourishing a more survival capab capable, sustainable kind of world. We are really endangered at this present point and need to shift. So I'm, I'm engage, engaging now in activism, you might call it new reality activism or new paradigm activism as I call it. Uh, and uh, this, is, this is what I think currently I, I, is my task to do. This is what I need to do. Well, as, as a futurist, your book, The Quantum Shift in the Global Brain, does an amazing job of sort of describing what we're experiencing now. You, I believe, wrote that about 10 years ago. And so- I have several, several more recent books, actually. This remains a classic, right. yes, yes, for me. I have several more recent books. The most recent was published about, well, about six months ago or so. It's called The Upshift, right. The Path to Healing and Evolution on Planet Earth. And that title encapsulates what my intention is, you know, to help come bring about an upshift in the way we think and the way we act so that we become sustainable and peaceful and all the good things that we can imagine, but that we are not doing because the way most people think is still very, very reactionary and very ret retrograde, retrograde mm -hmm. not yet up to, the, up to the level of where we need to act if we want to live on this planet, survive, live, and hopefully also live and have a well-being together. It's easy to watch the news and sort of lose hope and see all the conflicts going on and, and the craziness. When, when I read your book, I find hope. You're, you're talking about an, a macro shift that can occur on a global scale that has um, some level of control that works with nature and is involving our consciousness as a group. 
Um, so cool. in your vision, explain to me what you you've talked about a common theme. You've talked about the Akashic field and you've sort of talked about a group consciousness that begins to flourish, that we start to work together on a group consciousness level. Do you see us evolving to a level where we work at where our consciousness is more of a group level of consciousness, almost like as if the Akashic field has be has become conscious and alive itself? This is a process. I think it's happening. But it happens step by step, sometimes quite rapidly by leaps, but it doesn't happen all at once, the whole thing. And with what we need to do is to upshift, and this, this is now the term that I'm using these days, to shift up or to upshift the consciousness. We can't do it for all of humanity. We can try to create groups, even if they're small groups, who start to think differently, who try to perceive the world more aligned with what the new sciences are telling us, quantum science is telling us, and the new biology and the new, psych uh, the new consciousness research and all that, you see, aligned with the idea that we are one, that it's connect we are all connected. There, are no, there is no separation. Einstein said that already several months ago now, and separateness is an illusion, he said very clearly. According to the new sciences, we are together, we are bound, we are bind, bound together in a positive sense, so that what happens to one of us actually happens to all of us. We just have to bring it up from our deeper consciousness. And so the objective is get at least groups of people together who can think along the lines which is warranted by the new recognition of the nature of reality, to think along the lines of oneness and of love with each other, not as purely pure pious hope, but as reality, as the new reality. The, and the deep level, at the deepest level, the world is bound together. What happens is beyond time and space. What happens is non-local, that's to use the current or popular science expression. What happens here happens also elsewhere. It's all bound together. Consciousness, as the great physicist Schrodinger and many other people said, consciousness is one. There is no sense in which you can talk about consciousness in the plural. There is one consciousness in the world and we are a part of that. That seems revolutionary. It is a revolution in terms of classical science, but it is the new reality, it is the new science. Now we need to bring about this upshift in the consciousness, at least of a, of a critical group forming perhaps several, as many critical, uh, critical masses, small groups. You know, the great anthropologist Margaret Mead said, never doubt the power of a small group to change the world. Today, when we are in a condition of near chaos and uncertainty and, and you know, uh, disorientation, depression, we need to find a way forward. And that way forward we need to find by way of finding how in our own consciousness, there is the guidance. The guidance is there because we are part of evolution. We are conscious beings, part of evolution. These are, you know, as, as your program says, these are revolutionary concepts, you see. There is one consciousness, we are an expression of that consciousness. And that consciousness evolves because the world itself evolves. This evolution, according to the new sciences, uh, the, the, the cosmologies and so on, started probably in the aftermath of the Big Bang, 13.8 billion years ago. This evolution brings forth stars, star systems, uh, whole constellations and galaxies and the meta galaxy on the macro level. It brings forth atoms joined into molecules in, joining into crystals and cells and those joining into organism and ecologies on the, mac on the micro level. All this evolution is taking place and it's moving toward a more connected, more conscious, more coherent world. I'm just giving you the, con the conclusions of what mm -hmm. I find when I look at the processes that are happening today and try to understand what the experimental sciences are telling us, what physics is telling us, what the new biology is telling us, you see. And this is really a new reality and we must learn to live accordingly, align with it. It's in our interest. We can make mistakes. Let me just add this. And another species that doesn't have this high level of consciousness, that species cannot make mistakes. 
if it keeps making mistakes, it becomes extinct. It doesn't survive these mistakes. Humanity keeps making mistakes and constantly compensating for it provisionally. But these, these, these come together, they, they heap up, they gather together and they, they threaten us. They have the sword of Democles you know, hanging over our heads because we constantly mis, misread the nature of reality. This, this is not a material mechanistic reality, it's an interdependent, self-evolving, constantly connected consciousness, consciousness proven and consciousness guided universe. We are part of that. The key is in us. We don't ex need to accept it from other people, higher sources of human authority, what to do. We find it in us. When we truly act up to our, up to our nature and act the way we are meant to act, to be what we are meant to be, we are one people. We are one you know, of a larger system, the system of life on earth. Every blade of grass is a part of the system, and so are we. We have been exploiting it, we have been disregarding it. We have just made use of it for selfish and short-term ends, and now nature is responding. You can't keep doing that to a delicately balanced ecosystem. They are over, over, ex, overusing it, exaggerating its, its, its own use of it. And therefore we are distorting its effect. We are they need to currently, urgently rather, we need to upshift the way we think, upshift the way we think, we feel, and we act. It all starts with the mindset. What kind of mindset are we approaching the world with? The old fashioned one, where everything is separate, everything just competes with everything else. All that counts is power and money and sex and nothing else really. And we are here only once and we have to do the best we can. It's the old mindset. And it creates tensions, violence, war, disease, all the ills, Ills that beset our world today. We have done this without looking at the limits and the possibilities of who we truly are. We have to align with nature. We have to become one with that tremendous evolutionary process that is taking place in the world. We, feel, we can feel it. People are, have a high evolved consciousness, high level of spirituality, high level of insight, whether they come from the sciences or from art or from any other field of, of activity. We all come to the insight. Ultimately, we are meant to be one. We are meant to love unconditionally. That is part of our true nature. It's too much to expect that everybody starts, becomes a loving person all at once. But we need to move in the direction of recognizing our togetherness, our oneness in the world, and not to exceed the limits that it tells us because we are not separate from the world. Not only are we not separate from each other, we are not separate from nature either. As nature evolves, as, as we evolve, has to be synchronized, has to be attuned to each other, to one another. Otherwise we have the problems that we now actually have. We have to come back, we have to redress. We have to find that the way to, to move forward. And I'm suggesting there is a force in the universe the evolutionary force. I call it the holotropic attractor. It's just it's a technical term for it. Holo, holos means wholeness. Tropic is a tropism, you know. It's an attraction, it's a leaning toward. It's an attractor, which in the system sciences call, call things that move uh, uh, complex systems in a given direction are attractors. There's an attractor in nature. The set of laws of nature together form an attractor. And this attractor is to create more and more complex and coherent systems bound together by coherence. Coherence means one thing responds to the other, not separately acting together, coordinately, cooperation. That's the new secret of survival, not the strongest, not the being the most physically fit or biologically fit. Cooperative, working together. Those who work together will survive, will thrive. Those who try to do it alone, in competition with either, either you or me, either others or us, those eventually will find themselves in an unsustainable world, which you already find today. We've got to move beyond that. 
and we're able to work as groups non-locally as well. We can come together. We don't necessarily have to go to the church and sit in a group of 12. We can do this on a global scale, non-locally. We can form these groups as we are with the reality revolution, working together non-locally. I might have friends in Italy and friends in, in New York and all of us together, we can work towards this goal. Look, I'm trying to do something about that. I have founded what we call the Upshift Movement. It's a movement that invites people to join. You can look up upshiftmovement.com, okay. for example, and you'll find ways in which you can put in your own ideas, how we can upshift, how we can work together, how we can form these communities of, of, of thinking jointly, of collaboratively thinking and acting people. So I, this is an invitation. We are now creating the Upshift Foundation. It will register first in, first in England and in Italy, then in the US as well. And we have wanted to create a movement in this direction. So this is the, 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 the Upshift. The book itself I've written, it's, it's available but about six, eight months ago. It's been published, it's available on the internet, wherever you want, theupshift.com also you'll find it. And then the movement is sort of based on the idea of what I'm trying to sketch in a few words, this, that this is a new reality. It's a new world, which is a very old world, which is a real world, but it's new to the bulk of humanity. You've got to move into this world for our own good, for our own survival. You can do it anywhere. You can bring people together. The Upshift Movement Hulk tries to help. You can do it without it. You can do it on your own. The main thing is, to come together and to communicate. The key word, you know, is be coherent. Coherent mm -hmm. with, with yourself, coherent with the world around you. That is the key because evolution is a movement toward coherence in nature, in the universe, and in the human world as well. I'd like to make an observation and just discuss it with you. You're somebody that has forwarded the Akashic field theory and, and, and has some amazing books with, with some other writers about the Akashic field. It feels personally, and all I can really observe is my own consciousness, that my interaction with what I perceive as an Akashic field grows a little bit more every day. The environment that we're in seemingly, it appears, I feel a, a, a greater connection. Every morning I wake up, I feel a greater connection. And, and this may be happening on an unconscious level. People watch TV and they and they see something terrible happen. And in the past, they would be separate from it. They'd say, oh, that's terrible for them. But now they feel as if when they see somebody being beaten, they feel like that's me being beaten. They can connect to these events on a world scale interpersonally. The separation goes away and it also affects us as a whole. And I'm wondering if you've, if you've observed this or if, if you've, yeah. uh, through your interactions, observed this. I, I, I live it, you know, because yeah. I have written about these things and I've said they're coming. Now they're coming, they're actually happening. Somehow I'm exposed to more and more people like yourself. I don't want to, you know, put you in a, in a group, but there are many people saying the similar things like you do. The, this is, there is an intensification. There is an mm -hmm. acceleration. There is also a growing realization that the time has come to change. You can't make it as we are going. And it concerns all of us. Let's be in it together. It's interesting, you know, whatever happens in the world, whether it's refugees or climate change or war, mm -hmm. all, all of these things are together acting in such a way that they are creating a sense in people that we are in the midst of a process, of a process of change. And nothing less than our own survival is at stake, basically, the continuation of human life. We are at a, such a critical moment, we can create such disbalances, such problems, such gaps, and such conflicts in the, in the human world that create wars. We don't know where it could end, violence, Get intensification of people's hate also to each other and the depression and disappointment, you know. Mm -hmm. On the other way is up to recognize that in you, there is this sense of becoming one, of belonging, of working with, because you're feeling that you are none other than the others around you. And that's the sense that is waking up on people. I get this all day, to, all day today and, and these days. I've had, having had people, I live outside in Tuscany, but people come to visit me sometimes so far away. Today I had a lunch guest here who comes from London 
and it tries to, we try to work together, we will work together. But every day there are people visiting me and I get these hundreds of emails every day. I'm trying to do my best to cope with that because this is a phenomenon that we have to face together. We are in it together. It's a tremendous challenge. We can either find a way towards a thriving co cooperative world or we find we hang separately. As they said, we either hang together or hang separately. You know, so this is the challenge before us. And I think if we are moving in the right direction, because despite the surface of chaos, of depression, of disorientation, there is a sense of just as what you are describing. And there is also a movement toward, toward integration and cooperation. We are now moving on to the global level. It can be catalyzed by war. It can be catalyzed by a virus by a pandemic, can be catalyzed by, by climate change. All these things together push us onto a global level. This planet is beginning to react, to respond, and to, its elements are beginning to come together with all the problems, with all the gaps, all the development that we call in science non-linear, not a linear simple development from one thing to another, a non-linear development. This planet is coming together. <clears throat> if you like, in these terms, the Akashic field is getting organized on this earth. The Akashic field is a universal field. Everything that happens is maintained. We know that you things, experiences, anything that happened at any, anywhere on space and earth cannot disappear completely. Just like energy cannot disappear. You can transform it, you can't erase it. The same thing with information, it, it stays. So the Akashic field, as it appears on Earth, as it binds us in, on Earth, is getting itself organized with all the problems, with all the threats that we, see, that we see. But on the whole, it's pulling itself together. It's still not guaranteed that it right. will make it. It's still possible that it breaks down. It's very sad because it will be the end or quasi end of a conscious species, one of the highest level of, of, of life on Earth is a more conscious level, not the best, but the more, most conscious level. Perhaps, to, perhaps whales, perhaps the dolphins, perhaps other animals are developing a similar level. I, I think every, all of them have consciousness, but we are at that level where we have a consciousness that enables us to recognize what we are doing, recognize also that we are not doing something well, that we got to change. And that's a tremendous plus. It's a tremendous means of saving ourselves, moving in a new direction, in the direction of nature. Let's be as many more and more products these days that are coming on, on, on online. Let's be nature-based. Everything that we do has to be cosmos-based or universe-based, if you like. You mm -hmm. know? Not separate but part of that community of evolution, community of life on Earth, of which we are really a conscious and, and therefore determinant, critical part of that. You can almost hypothesize as a, as a systems thinker that on other planets in the universe, there's a natural process where an Akashic field forms and the, the civilization e either grows to connect with it and becomes a whole, or it separates and, and the planet moves on. It's almost like a natural process that we're going through. We're experiencing a process where we're becoming one through this connection in the Akashic field. I fully agree with you. Yes, I fully agree with you. Yes, this is a process. And we are at a, at a tipping point, at a critical bifurcation point in this process. You know, there are alternative ways we can proceed. It's interesting about the bifurcation idea, you know, which comes from physical chemistry and, 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 and biophysics. It's a process where the past no longer determines the future. Mm -hmm. It's a process where you can freely choose the way to go. Bifurcation means the trajectory, the trajectory of evolution, the way a system evolves. It doesn't continue the way it did evolve. It now separate branches of its trajectory are opening up. And the choice which branch we take is not determined by the past, it's only determined by what we do today, what is happening within the systems today, okay? 
So this is, uh, I've been talking about this for, for decades, but now we are living it. Now, mm -hmm. now we are in it. We have the freedom to choose our destiny. If you don't choose it, well, with an open eye, with an awakened soul and awakened mind, then we can well become extinct. If we choose it well, we become a leading force, an avant-garde of evolution of life on the planet with a higher level of consciousness. And possibly we can then develop contact with other civilizations, you know, there is indication that we are not alone, that we cannot be alone. And I think there is also indication that we are in subtle communicational contact with other higher consciousnesses around, around us. It's, this is, we are not alone. Yes. We are being guided, but we need to have the sensitivity, the openness in our consciousness to follow that guidance, to perceive it and to work along with it. So what, at the time I'm speaking to you right now, we're going through a big technological shift. Um, artificial intelligence is starting to take over and, and dramatically change the way we make art, music, um, quantum computing is changing. So there's a couple of views. We can look at this as very disturbing and these radical shifts. Is there a positive viewpoint for advances in technology in helping us to grow into this merging Akashic field? Or should we be concerned about the technological advances that are occurring in the world? Technology mustn't be a master. It's something that we create. We can create it for our purposes. No point in creating something and then having, having, be, having be subjugated to it. Technology can serve our intentions, our, our, our well-being. It has to be a means of communication, of, co of contact. First contact, obviously, and based on contact communication, bringing people together, bringing ideas together, creating these um, these uh, critical critical mass shifts, you know, groups that can change together the world. So technology, yes, it's a very important factor. I don't believe that it has consciousness of that kind that living systems have. I just don't believe that. Mm -hmm. Because living, the consciousness of living systems is not a surface event. It goes back to the very beginning of this process. We are conscious of the consciousness that has existed in the universe for since the Big Bang. You know, it's an eternal, unlimited consciousness. We are part of that. And an artificial system cannot pick that up. We need to have that being born into the system. This is we are being born into the Akashic field, you know. The Akashic field is not the bottom of it separately. We are just entering onto it like, a, like into a framework. It's a total field. It's a whole system in of which you are a part. Living systems are a part. Biological, biosocial, biopsychological systems are a part. So uh, I think we should consciously make technology serve us by bringing us together, by helping us to come together. When we come together and we talk to each other, we start acting differently. We develop our, evolve our consciousness. We have to encounter each other and become cooperative partners for each other. What is your opinion about global warming in relation to this shift? Is there a way that we can address this um, together as a group in a proper way that brings us hope that we can resolve what seems on paper to be an unresolvable situation with the current trends on the earth. As long as we keep using technology for purposes of selfish purposes for enhancing our wealth, enhancing also our power over others of purely, uh, you know, what is called it zero Zero sum competition is either you gain, you gain or I gain. If I gain, you lose. If you if you gain, I lose. You know that kind of thinking is 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 creating the problems and technology that doesn't help. What we need is this new sense that we are connected already, but our connection has to be the basis for cooperation, for coherence. You know, very clean, clear ideas. There is no life without the coherence of all its elements. If any part of its elements is no longer coherent with the rest, it's a disease in the system. 
and if any part that is separate from the rest starts only pursuing its own purposes, then it's a cancer in the system and eventually it'll kill the system, kill the rest of it. So the whole system has to be a coherent whole and we can only become a coherent whole if we feel it. If, if you recognize it by looking at yourself as you are, as you do, for all that you're saying to me today, mm -hmm. it really shows that you feel this development. It's part of you. And that is the hope for the future. More and more starts feeling it, they'll ask, how can we come together? I'm doing my very best, whatever I can think of. I write it up, I talk about it. I try to communicate it because we can become coherent wholes if we listen to each other, if we become a coexisting, co-interthinking, you might say, entity in the, in the world, like healthy systems. Healthy systems are wholes. Mm -hmm. Disease systems are, 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 are fragments of healthy systems and eventually they'll, they'll either disappear or they kill the system. It's interesting that some movements sort of decry how terrible globalism and coming together is. When I hear that, I, I, it's um, concerning and, and, and ignorance because because the, the, the true vision that you and I have is that a world coming together, working together, um, letting go of divisions and competition among countries and peoples. Um, but there's always this underlying, oh, it's a terrible thing. It's a master plan. Uh, they're going to they're going to come together and, and subjugate you. So I, I'd like to, to propose to the world that it's not bad for us to come together um, um, on a global scale. Right. <laughs> You know, these are conspiracy theories. They're also searching right. for scapegoats. It's, it's only just made up by the bad, bad guys, etc. you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're very dangerous because the world is not made up of you or me. The world is made up as only we, you know? Mm -hmm. And every healthy system is a, is a whole system. Co working together is all its parts and working together in its environment with other systems in its environment. This, I use the term systems that you can use being uh, existence or living organism or whatever you want to call it. You know, we are part of a universe that evolves, evolves on earth as probably on other planets, probably myriad, myriad other planets. We are likely, they probably exist. We know that the planets exist. We think that the, the life on it is likely to exist as well and they develop. These are the laws of the universe. They are not separatist laws. They're not uh, separating laws. They are laws for bringing elements together into coherent wholes. We feel that you are healthy. You are a positive factor. If you ignore that, you can be a danger to the system. You can still break apart the system and then we can't survive. We can't survive separately. We cannot make it. All these nearly 8 billion people on, on the planet, each working or, or any segment of it, just working separately on its own, you just create more and more tensions. The war today is an expression of this short sightedness of trying to just say, you or I, it's either my territory or it's your territory, and I bomb you if you don't accept that. You know, this, this kind of, of all Darwin is thinking, Darwin didn't think like that himself, but people took it up, saw that it, he just talked about the survival of the fittest, be fit, then you can survive. Darwin actually talked about working together, be cooperative, that's when you can survive. Mm -hmm. And the new, new recognition in science is that we must become cooperative systems, creating more and more intensely in, interacting systems. It's not a danger, it's an opportunity because our mind, our being, it will develop like that. We don't submerge our individuality by cooperating. We just tune, to tune it together. Our body doesn't become an undifferentiated mass of one kind of cell. It remains the 750 or so different kinds of cells continue having their own identity. And the billions of interactions that they, may, they, they do it is based on the interaction between different cells who are continuing to exist as different kinds of cells. You see. We don't become one, by becoming one, we, be the, we don't become a ma an undifferentiated mass. We become elements of a living, growing system. You've got to learn that, not to fear global cooperation, but to enter into it for our own benefits, for our joint benefit. I don't believe anybody has put on paper uh, an 
an, a plan or an explanation, an understanding of planetary consciousness better than Urban Laszlo. Urban Laszlo's books have been a huge contribution to the world. You're shifting the world. I promise you, you shifted me, Urban. And I thank you. Sometimes it just takes one person. And I call anybody to um, read Dr. Laszlo's books. They are truly transformative and amazing. They're coming to a level that we talk about on the podcast all the time. We are entering into a social memory complex, a planetary consciousness, and this is an active role that we are all playing individually. And I recommend um, in Quantum Shift in the Global Brain, uh, the manifesto on planetary consciousness that Dr. Laszlo wrote with the Dalai Lama in 1996. It still resonates with me today. And I call upon anybody who has a chance to read that manifesto to in, to incorporate it into our lives. Um, I want to thank you, Dr. Laszlo, for um, inspiring me to start this podcast and 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 allowing uh, me to see the world in a, in a higher way. And, and I just want to thank you for all that you've done and all that you've written and expanding my view of the world and giving me a level of hope in knowing that my participation in this group whole can have an effect and we can, there is a positive view of the future, no matter how terrible of uh, what we see now, we can come together and we can change this world. Your participation, Scott, can have an effect. I think it does have an effect. You are working to, to contact larger groups of people with this message what you're doing is imperative, it's essential to move to the right direction. We have to clone you, we have to multiply you. So there's several people like this doing this. Then we have cohesive, cohesive groups finding each other and working together. In a matter of years, we could really change the direction in which you're moving because find the way, find the way to upshift us through the upshift of our thinking. You know. That's the message. You are doing a wonderful job. Thank you for this conversation. I enjoyed it. Thank you, Dr. Wazel. We need to clone you. That's who we need to clone. But I just want to thank you for coming on. And it's just been an honor to speak with you. And, and if you ever want to speak with me again, I'm always open. And I will put a list of Dr. Laszlo's books in the description and his websites. You can reach out and learn more about Dr. Laszlo's books. Thank you so much, Dr. Laszlo. And welcome to the Reality Revolution. Thank you.